Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be doing a little bit more mill turning. In the last video I made these two V-belt pulleys, and in this video I'm going to be making this part, which is the weapon hub. This is the hub that will hold the weapon for my combat robot, and these two pulleys are the pulleys that actually drive this hub. So uh, let's get started making this weapon hub. I'm making this hub in pretty much the same way that I made the other V-belt pulleys. I'm starting out with the uh, raw stock, which is a three inch diameter hunk of 6061 aluminum. I'm just roughly marking off kind of um, where I want to cut it on the bandsaw, and then I'm just cutting it off on the bandsaw and I'll finish it on the mill later. A little note when you're using a bandsaw like this, always check where your guides and the clamps and everything are. I thought this was cutting really slowly and it turns out that I just had the um, clamp in the way. So once I move that, it cut really nicely. Once I got everything cut on the bandsaw, I just moved it over to the mill, clamped it up in the vise, faced one side off with the superfly, flipped it over, and then basically just faced it down until I got the final dimensions, which were 51 and a half millimeters. Now that I have the stock cut down and to the right length, I need to put a hole in the center of it. Someone asked on the last video why I used the lathe and why I didn't just keep this on the mill, and it's really just um, a matter of time. It's a lot easier to just chuck this up on the lathe and then just put a hole in the center than indicating it on the mill to get the um, center location just right. So I use the lathe for this, and I'm just doing a 3 8 inch hole because I'll be using a 3 8 inch shaft down the middle as my arbor. Because I didn't ream out this hole, I just drilled it with a 3 8 inch drill bit, the fit for the shaft was a little bit tight. So I just applied some super glue to the shaft and used an arbor press to press the shaft into place. Once again, as with the V-belt pulley, I'm using an ER20 collet to hold the 3 8 inch shaft into the spindle. And setting up the y-axis and the z-axis, I did this the same way that I did the v-belt pulley. So if you want to check out that video, it goes into a little bit more in-depth explanation on how I did that. For the x-dimension, I'm actually using the lathe tool in the vise to actually shave off some of the outside of the um, material. And then I'm measuring the material and then just applying that offset in Path Pilot. So let's say I shave this down to exactly three inches, then I can just say that I'm at 1.5 inches or whatever half of that diameter is, and that will be my center line, and that will be my x0. Now that the part is mounted on the mill and it is indicated, it's time to start machining, or I guess it's really turning at this point. And everything went, you know, pretty good. Um, I didn't really run into any issues until the end, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But this part just had a lot of material that I needed to remove. The shaft or the stem of this part was, I think, only about 25 millimeters, and I start at three inches, so that's just a lot of material to carve off of it. And I could have easily done this part in two pieces, but I really wanted this to be solid. This is ultimately what's going to be holding the weapon of the robot, and there's going to be a lot of force and a lot of stresses in this, so I really wanted it to be as solid as possible. And um, this actually did allow me to get a couple different camera angles, so you can see it kind of being cut here. It's pretty uneventful. It just kind of builds up chips, you clear out the chips, and keep going. I forgot to mention I'm actually using two different lathe tools for this part. I'm using that left-handed tool that you initially saw to cut the shaft and kind of do the um, bottom profile, I guess, of the top hub. And then I switched over to the V profile that I used on the V-belt pulley to finish off the top of it, which is the pulley. As promised, here are where things start to go south. As I was taking some of the last final cuts on the V-belt profile, almost done, I noticed that the spindle was almost stalling out. What I learned later was that I actually had a bad motor driver or bad um, configuration on my spindle motor driver because I had one of the very first 440s that come off the production line. I've since fixed the issue, but for this, when I was taking any kind of um, cut whatsoever, as soon as the 
tool would hit the workpiece, it would just kind of slow down and there's a couple instances where it even stalled. So I basically had to adjust the settings and go really slow and take just these really tiny light cuts and just kind of limp my way through the rest of the part. Once I finally got the turning done, I used the same method as the pulley to remove the arbor. I just used one of those little uh, mini torches and heat it up and then just pressed the arbor out of it. It took quite a bit longer to do it this way just because of the amount of thermal mass, but it worked effectively the same way. It just took a lot more heat. Now all that's left to do is drill and tap the hole pattern for mounting on the bottom side of the part. I use the passive probe on the mill with a V-block in the vise to find the center of the 3 8 inch hole that runs down the center. And once I found the center, I just, you know, used a drill to drill those out and then brought it over and did my favorite thing in the world, tapping holes. Uh, this actually was kind of a pain in the butt because it's a round part, so it's kind of not that easy to hold on to. So I clamped it kind of in a vise using a bolt through the middle and then a longer bolt through the um, one of the holes just to kind of stabilize it. And that mostly worked, but it was still pretty terrible. Here is the finished part. Everything turned out really nicely and all the tolerances are good and this may end up working out for me. The center shaft is actually ever so slightly smaller than the dimension it needs to be for this reason. When I slip on the tapered roller bearing, I don't really want this to be a press fit because I need to be able to get it off easy enough in between matches. So I made this just ever so slightly too small so I can get this on and off by hand. So the next thing to do is to make the bearing block or the weapon block that this whole thing goes into. So look at that in an upcoming video. So this actually fits in like that. And you'll notice the other pulleys sit in there. And this is the whole weapon assembly that drives the weapon for my 30 pound combat robot. So check this out in an upcoming video. Also be sure to check out my Facebook page and also check out my Patreon page to not only support my videos, but also to see other channels I support. Thanks for watching. See you next time.